Hi, it's Shonky Product Bust in Time again. We love this here on the EEV blog. I've got many requests for this one and it's been discussed on the forum and uh, various places. It's the Fontus, the self-filling water bottle on the crowdfunding uh, site of Choice Indiegogo. And of course, it has flexible funding, the uh, funding choice of champion scam campaigns everywhere. So let's check it out and yes, Spoiler, it's 100% grade A baloney. So what is it? Well, the Fontus creates water out of light and air. And how does it do this? Well, if you go all the way down here, it's a dehumidifier. And here it is. It uses a solar uh, panel, like a flexible one that you can just unfold. And then it's got a uh, Peltier device in there, which then uh, cools down one side and a fan for the airflow. There's another version for a uh, bike as well, which uses as your bike uh, goes along the ride here it is so the airflow instead of coming from a fan it comes from uh, you actually uh, riding your bike and it's a dehumidifier that's it Peltier device cools down on one side and uh, it extracts water out of the air yes technically possible but hmm is it going to work as claim? So let's bust this thing wide open using a basic principle of thermodynamic systems. It's called latent heat, specific heat. And you can just go on Wikipedia and look this up. So in this particular example of dehumidification, what we're looking at is the gas to liquid phase change specifically. And we can get the latent heat of vaporization for this. Very easy. It's right there in the table on Wikipedia. So we're going to use the basic equation Q equals ML, and this is specifically for uh, heat vaporization. Uh, it's not for latent heat fusion, which is the uh, solid to liquid phase change. We're looking at uh, gas to liquid or vice versa phase change. So Q is the amount of energy released or absorbed during that particular phase change. In this case, we're actually trying to draw energy from the system. We're trying to convert from a gas into a liquid. So this is the energy we have to put into our system, into our Peltier device to actually cool down the air to extract the water. So in this case the units of energy are kilojoules and M equals the mass in kilograms and L is our specific heat. In this particular case LV the specific heat of vaporization which we can get from the table. So the amount of energy Q that we have to put into the system in order to cool down the air to uh, convert it to water and we have a mass of one kilogram of uh, water is what we want so uh, we multiply that by 2264 kilojoules per kilogram. And of course that's the world's easiest equation it gives us an answer of 2264 kilojoules. And look, they've got some data. So let's use their real data here that they've got very comprehensive table. What this one uh, shows us is how much water the aero, which is the blue circles, don't worry about the ride, the uh, bike one, it can't produce as much water. Let's go for the aero. The blue circles here, you'll note the size of those represents one litre of water. So let's go for the absolute best case scenario for this thing, okay? Not the worst case, the absolute best case. What we've got here is the amount of water it can produce the bubble size in what time on the x-axis here in minutes versus on the y-axis the humidity and the temperature. So let's take the absolute best case here at 90% humidity and 40 degrees C. It's a pretty crap environment isn't it? It'll take in that condition let's call that about 150 minutes to produce one liter of water 90% humidity, 40 degrees C. Obviously, as the uh, temperature drops, uh, you're going to uh, produce less and less water, even for the same for a given amount of time, even for the same humidity environment. So this is the absolute best case using their own data that this thing can actually produce. So now we can actually do a calculation for one hour. Now they claim uh, to be able to produce uh, one litre of water in 150 minutes in a 90% uh, humidity environment at 40 degrees Celsius, okay? Accidentally wrote 99% there, oops. So how much energy do we need to put into the system uh, for one hour to get that one litre of water? Well, we can just take the 2264 kilojoules we got earlier, divide it by 2.5 because we're 150 minutes, and it takes 905 kilojoules to produce one litre of water in one hour. And we can work that out in watts. What's kilojoules? Yeah, no one knows about kilojoules. That is equal to 250 watts 
per litre for one hour. And of course, that is just the basic thermodynamics. It's for a 100% efficient system. We haven't talked about anything else involved in like the temperature gradients and everything. Like there's a whole bunch of other stuff. This is 100% efficient system. So what does a 250 watt solar cell look like to produce one liter of water in one hour? Well, let me show you. This is one of the most efficient 250 watt panels. Look at the size of this thing. It's one of these rooftop installation ones. This will produce 250 watts in ideal solar insulation, i.e. middle of summer, the absolute best case conditions. And also, uh, you've got to track the thing like this too. You've got to track the sun to get the optimum efficiency out of the damn thing. You've got to be kidding me. That'll fill it up in one hour. Ooh, foo. But of course that's not going to give you one litre of water because we're talking about a 100% efficient system here. That 250 watt panel is 1.5 square metres. Even if you scaled that back for the 150 minutes that they uh, claimed here, then you would still need 0.6 square metre solar panel with 100% efficiency tracking the sun with solar, you know, the best solar insulation in the middle of summer, everything else to get their claimed one litre of water on a, but you're not going to get it because it's 100% efficient system oh you can see how they've just plucked this data out of their ass but look at this solar panel it's got to be like 30 centimeters uh, on a side so 0.1 square meters one sixth of the size required to get their claimed data down here at 100 percent efficiency in the entire system like, I don't even have to get into Peltier devices and the rest of the thermodynamics of the thing. Right there, you know their data is busted. 100% grade A bullshit. And remember, that was ideal case for 40 degrees C, 90% humidity environment. It's just going to drop to bugger all. They are out by several orders of magnitude. So sorry to anyone who backed this turd because it will not happen. This thing will produce bugger all water and you would have just pissed away your money. $341,000 with three days left. Unbelievable. But this is what you get when you get a uh, art student this is from like a university school of art like design arts and things and it won all these awards and got you know awarded and got back to every like mentioned everywhere all over the place and it's just back of the envelope stuff you can tell they're out by several orders of magnitude now, just a quick note about the uh, efficiency there. I've been saying, you know, assuming 100% efficiency. Well, some people might point out that uh, heat pumps uh, that you typically get in your air conditioner and things like that can actually have more than 100% efficiency in terms of pumping heat, i.e. it might be a 5 kilowatt uh, heat pumping air conditioner, but it might only take you know, 2000 uh, watts or two kilowatts, for example. So it can actually be more uh, efficient than that. But we're not dealing with your more traditional aircon type uh, heat pumps here. We're dealing with a Peltier device. And if we go and have a look at uh, one of the, um, you know, one of the you know, a top quality brand one on the market and have a look at the data sheet here for this one. This is like a uh, 30 watt. I've got, yeah, this is a uh, 36 watt uh, model that we're going to take a look at here. And it will actually have a graph for the coefficient of performance, COP it's called. And here it is here. And uh, you can see that the coefficient of performance one on the y-axis here actually means 100% efficient, okay? And look, it can actually go greater than one. These Peltier devices can. And this is extremely typical of Peltier devices. They're almost all identical, give or take, you know, a few tens of percent or something like that. Or, you know, if you get some weird, you know, researchy type one, they can be uh, better. But that's only at low input voltages, i.e. low currents, low powers. So uh, when we're operating here, we're going to be operating this thing at the maximum power possible. So the figure, the efficiency figure, is actually uh, typically taken for these Peltier devices. A nominal industry rule of thumb is that uh, about 0.4 to 0.7 coefficient of performance. So about 40% to 70% efficient. So the figures we've been looking at, eh, it's going to be worse. 
Oh, and the different uh, parametric curves here, they're actually uh, for different uh, delta temperatures. That's what DT is, the differential temperature between one plate and the other. So, you know, the higher the uh, temperature difference between the plates, the lower efficiency you actually get. But, hey, you know, these things can actually be reasonably efficient at low powers with low temperature differentials. But that's not what we're dealing with here. And of course, there's nothing new here, no new technology at all. It's just a thermoelectric Peltier effect dehumidifier. And ta-da, here's a buyer's guide of all the thermoelectric uh, dehumidifiers on the market, some of the best ones. Let's take a look at it. So if we have a look at this one, which they rate is the highest tested moisture removal rate in its class. If we have a look at this, the, this Ivation one, we can actually look at the uh, moisture removal rate and see how much. And here it is. It's rated by the manufacturer to remove six ounces of moisture per day from the air. And this one uh, draws about uh, 13 and a half watts. Uh, and basically exactly what that um, solar panel will t might typically get on a good, you know, uh, cloudless day, you know, good solar insulation, good position, angle, everything else. Six ounces, I don't know what an ounce is, I had to use my converter here, 0.17 litres per day that's for 24 hours continuous operation from that solar panel you do not get uh, uh 24 hours of sun you get like peak during the day and it, it's a curve like this so even you know like if you're lucky you might get like you know six hours of sort of you know really good usable energy maybe in summer eight hours or something like that but you're still not gonna you're even if you had it for 24 hours you're still only going to get 0.177 that's one of the best and most efficient tested thermoelectric dehumidifiers on the market and I really shouldn't even have to mention the stupid uh, bike version. Look, you've got it strapped on the bottom here. Like, the solar panels, are you kidding me? The surface area, the angles, half the side won't be used and your knees will be blocked. Like, like no. Oh, geez, you'd be lucky to get a couple of watts out of it. So if we have a quick look at the ride here, this is the uh, render for the thing, which is very similar to their uh, prototype, which I'll show you in a second. We have our old friend, look, the storage battery. Why? Because the solar panel's going to do bugger all. And check this out. This is a real hoot. Current status of technical development. The basic principles of the Fontas technology, atmospheric water generation through condensation, i.e. a dehumidifier, has been proven and tested in monitored conditions. With your support, we will be able to enter into a higher development phase, optimize efficiency, <laughs> yeah, you think, uh, refine the design and provide test data. Because we don't have test data. So if they don't have any test data, they've just admitted it, provide test data, where did this come from? Came out of their ass, that's where it came from. And more gems, we can't guarantee that Fontas will deliver a constant water output in all conditions and may produce little or no water at all under some conditions. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. So they've been working on this thing for years and they've got a real flashy video, they're all confident, it's fantastic, everyone's sold and right down the bottom, here it is, it's explicitly pointed out that the products which serve as perks are in the development phase. It cannot be excluded that during the development phase, technical, economic or other circumstances may arise in a delay of the delivery of the perk, production and delivery of the perk in a different form as regards to functionality and or design, and non-production of the perk. They're saying, well, if it doesn't work technically and we can't meet our claims, which they can't, then we're just not going to deliver it. Huh, sucked in. Thanks for the money though. So it's done. I don't know what else I have to say about this thing. It's just, it's just ridiculous. It's a case, this is what happens when you get a timeline like this where they actually do the uh, engineering. If you have a look at the timeline, they actually did production design, patent filed, Australian design and world company founded. And then the Indiegogo campaign we've got now and after the Indiegogo campaign, oh, they'll just do some technical development and they'll refine it and optimize it. You can't design, you can't refine and optimize by several orders of magnitude. They simply failed to do basic engineering, basic physics on this thing. You've got to obey the laws of thermodynamics. You just can't get around it. You need this sort of energy to put in and then the efficiency of the system and the whole rest of it. It's busted. 
So there you go, that's the Fontus, another ridiculous, impractical Indiegogo campaign. You'll get bugger all water from it, won't be worth your while. And if you want to know a bit more of the physics uh, behind this, Thunderfoot's done an excellent video on this as well. I'll link that in, so check that out. Well, there's only one thing left to do with this, and that is to uh, do a community service and post it. I found their address on the uh, university website, so maybe they'll uh, learn something from it. So. Here we go. Catch you next time. For me, it's like magic because out of thin air and sun, we are bringing this bottle to fill itself with drinkable water. A bottle that gives you the freedom to go anywhere. And yes, it's complete bullshit. But it's not stopped it from being given about a third of a million dollars and featured all over the place. So imagine you have a glass of water and you put a seal on the top. The water will establish